my office mate who became my co-founder and our professor who was both of our like lab mom, um, she, the three of us founded the company together around growing bones from stem cells. So we're kind of where, rege the way that I think about it is we're like at the intersection of regenerative medicine, um, which is, gets a lot of um, attention these days, um, and cell therapies, like so looking to the body as a source of therapy, and digital fabrication. So we take, um, you know, after blood, bone is the most implanted human tissue. So it's, it's kind of a big deal, like 10 times more than any other organ that comes after that. So um, the only way to get human bone is like any other organ is to cut it out of a human, um, which oftentimes is yourself. If you need a, a bone in your ankle, you might, they might cut it out of your hip. Um, if you need bone for spinal surgery, sometimes they get them from donors. Um, but really it's kind of um, a bit of a brutal process. And so what we propose is a different approach where we use CT scans to get the three-dimensional data so you know what the puzzle piece of the bone <laughs> looks like um, and engineer that perfect puzzle piece shape. And, um, and we take stem cells from patients to infuse into those, hmm. those scaffolds and we have a piece of living bone um, that's ready for implantation without, with a minimally invasive procedure. There's cancer, where cancer metastasis, where um, cancers might lodge onto bone and take up residence there, and the bone often needs to be resected um, to to treat that. And then there's really nothing to, to to nothing easy to do there. This is like the Roger Ebert story. It's a very sad story. Where I don't know if you know this. Yeah. So he had salivary cancer, and it metastasized to his jaw, and um, they resected his. They took out his jaw and refashioned him a new one from his hip bone um, and from his shoulder blade. And this led to a whole host of issues, like a permanent limp, and it was, it's horrible. So there's, that's, so cancer is, a cer is certainly an indication. Um, trauma, so, um, you know, if there's focal defects that are too big to heal, um, congenital defects where people are born with facial asymmetries, there's a long, long list. And our next product that we're also developing in incorporates a layer of cartilage on top of the bone. And so this can be used, hopefully, to treat very broad indications, like um, you know, instead of knee replacements, right? Knee replacements are often performed really just because the, that few millimeters of cartilage is what's damaged. We know the technology works in the lab. We need to understand, does it work the same way inside the body as it does in the laboratory setting. So it, that's why um, we, call our, we call this type of research translational research. Um, when you find a technology that works in the lab and you want to test, will it work? We call that in vitro, meaning in glass, like petri dishes, um, into in vivo, meaning inside the body. So that's the transition for us. It's um, you know the proof of concept in our field is, is at that transition into in vivo studies.